Number five. Suppose you first walk 12 meters in a direction 20 degrees west of north, and then 20 meters in a, di in a direction 40 degrees south of west. How far are you from your starting point? And what is the compass direction of a line connecting your starting point to your final position? Okay, so they give us a diagram on the right-hand side. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slightly, uh, I'm, I'm going to redraw it, all right? The reason why is because there's a lot of letters over there and it's confusing to me. So uh, let's, let's, let's draw a, a point. And let's take the first piece of information. It says, uh, it says, suppose you walk first walk 12 meters in a direction 20 degrees west of north. Okay, so what? So if I had to draw a little coordinate system here from that point, what, where would 20 degrees west of north be? Well, it would probably be somewhere in here, right? Here's the northern um, position. This is the western position. So when they say 20 degrees west of north, they're telling you this angle right in here, that's 20 degrees, okay? And they said that you walked 12.0 meters. So this is the 12. Okay, great. Then they said from that particular point, you moved 20 meters in a direction 40 degrees south of west. So at now this point up here, let's draw another coordinate system. Now it says you moved in a direction 40 degrees south of west. So here's your westerly direction. Here's your southerly direction. And now you moved 40 degrees south of west. So it sounds like you probably moved somewhere in here, right? Okay, that sounds good. Now let me extend the line a little more, okay? So this right here was 40 degrees, and it says that you walked 20 meters, right? So this, val this line it has a magnitude of 20 meters. Great, so now it wants us to find the, essentially the resultant vector. Right? So what we're looking for now is you ended your walk here. What we wanna find now is this piece. Let me draw it a little straighter. What we wanna find now is this piece. Okay, this is our R. And what they want to do now is they want us to find the um, location or the compass direction, right? So it looks like it's almost going a little bit below this particular black line, right? So we might have a little angle in here somewhat, but don't worry about that for now, all right? There's actually a nice simple technique to use to, uh, to be able to figure this out. Okay, so all we need to do is this. Anytime you have a really complex, multi-directional, many vectors going on, just create a nice, uh, what I'll call a vector table. Vector table. Okay, and this is really a vector component table. So what I'm going to do for all my vectors, I'm gonna calculate the X components and the Y components for each. And I'm gonna plug them into this table. And then all I'm going to do is just add them together. And when I add them together, I'm going to get my resultant at the bottom. And then we can do Pythagorean's theorem to find the resultant. All right. So first, let's take our uh, let's let's first work with the first sentence again. Suppose you first walk 20 meters in a direction 20 degrees west of north. OK, so here's my coordinate system for that vector. We moved 12, 20 degrees uh, west of north, and it had a value of 12. So what are the components of this vector? Well, it looks like we have a northerly component here and an easterly, excuse me, a westerly component. Instead of calling it north and uh, west, though, what we're going to do is we're going to choose the words a positive y value and a negative x value. The reason why is because I want to plug them into my vector table. Okay, so how do we calculate this value over here? Well, what we need to do is simply use some trigonometric function that relates the hypotenuse, the angle, and then this seems to be the adjacent side relative to that, to that angle. So what would that be? 
it looks like we would use a cosine formula, right, on the right-hand side. So this would be cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of 20 degrees will equal the positive y value that I should get divided by 12. So let's do that. So cosine of 20, excuse me, well, let's actually get that measurement. So cosine of 20, plug that into the calculator. This works out to be, we'll do two significant figures, 0.94. And that's going to equal the positive y value over 12. To solve for the y, just cross multiply. So my positive y value here will equal 12 times 0.94. Um, two significant figures, so it will have a value of 11. Great. So this is my first value in the vector table. It's going to be, it's going to be excuse me, a positive 11 meters. Okay, great. Now let's calculate the x. And let me put this part in black here. I'll calculate now the negative x value. So again, I know the hypotenuse. I know the angle. And this side seems to be opposite of that angle. So for this particular problem, I'm going to use the sine in order to solve for that. So now I have sine. So now I have sine of theta will equal the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So the sine of 20 will equal the negative x value over 12. So take the sine of 20. So sine of 20 is a uh, two sig fig, so 0 0.34. That'll equal the negative x value over 12. And then cross multiply again. So the negative x value should be, so 0.34 times 12. And two sig fig, so it looks like it works out to 4.1 meters. Remember, that's negative. Okay, so now for x, plug in negative 4.1 meters in your table. Okay, we took care of that vector. Great. Now, what's the second vector in the problem? So let's reread. And then you're going to, for, and then you're moving 20 meters, 40 degrees south of west. Okay, just draw a coordinate system again. So let's draw a new coordinate system up here. So this is your starting point now. Now draw a line 40 degrees south of west. So it probably looks something like this. Right? Here's the 40 degrees. And you walked 20 meters. OK, so what are the components of this vector? Well, it looks like we have a negative x component. And if we had to go down here, we have a negative y component. So how do we solve them? Well, same process, right? We're going to be using sine, cosine, tangents, whatever we can to, to figure it out. So let's first work with, it doesn't matter which one, let's first work with the negative, um, let's first, yeah, let's first work with the negative x. Put it in black again. So I know the hypotenuse, I know the angle, and this side seems like it's the adjacent side relative to the angle. So we're going to be using cosine in this case. So cosine of theta will equal the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So the cosine of 40 will equal the adjacent we said was a negative x value over um, the hypotenuse, which was 20. So find the cosine of 40. Cosine of 40 is uh, 2 sig fig 0 0.77 is equal to the negative x value over 20. And now just simply do a cross multiplication. So my negative x value should be uh, 20 times 0.77. 2 sig fig, so this works out to be about 15. And remember, I just got to bring the negative sign on over, so I know it's negative 15. So this is negative 15 meters. Wonderful. Now, let's do the same process, but now for my y value. Okay, my negative y value. So again, I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle, and the negative y value is opposite of that angle. So I, I'm going to use um, sine to help me out for this. Right, so sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side of that angle um, divided by the hypotenuse. So the sine of 40 is equal to negative y over 20. So calculate the sine of 40. Two sig fig, so it's 0 0.64. And that is equal to the negative y value over 20. Simply do your cross multiplication now. And your negative y value becomes 0.64 times 20. 
So 13. 13 meters, remember, just bring the negative sign on over. So there's now negative 13 meters. And that, those are all the vectors. Okay, now, in order to find the components of the resultant vector, all we now need to do is just add up our columns. So once we add up the x components and all the y components, separately that is, we get now the components of the resultant vector. So the x component of the resultant vector would be a negative 19.1 meters. Now technically when I add these values, I have to cut off that end, right? So it's really just negative 19 meters. That's the x component. Now when I add up my y uh, components, I get a value of negative, oh, where's the negative? There it is, negative two meters. Okay, so this is my x component of my resultant vector, and this is my y component of my resultant vector. So now what does that look like? Well, let's go to the bottom right-hand side of the screen. Let's draw a coordinate system. Let's first detail the x. So the x component of my resultant vector had a value of negative 19. So here's the start point. If I go out, negative 19 meters, it would probably bring me to about there. I'll call this 19. I could label it as negative if I wanted, but I don't have to since it's now in a coordinate system. Um, if that sounds confusing, don't worry about it. I mean, I, it doesn't matter. You can put it in, you can leave it out. Don't, don't overthink that. Then from that point, I'm going to go down two meters. Why? Because it says the y component is negative two. So now I move down negative two. Well, that's not really to scale, but... Let's get it a little straighter. There we go. So now I move down negative two meters, okay? And now the resultant vector will be the vector that connects the starting point now to the ending point. This is the R, the dotted line. Now if you look back to the picture, doesn't that look strikingly similar to the R value there? Yeah, it is, right? So this is a method that you can always employ in order to find your resultant vector. Just find the components of each vector separately. You don't even have to draw a detailed picture of them all together, right? So find them all separately, throw them in the vector table, add them all up, and then those, the summations of all those uh, components will give you the components of the resultant, all right? Now, you don't even need to draw a picture from here. Okay, you can even simplify this even further. You can simply, simply know that one of, I don't care which one you call A and B, but know that one of, these, one of these components will be considered your A value of the Pythagorean theorem. One of these would be considered the B value of your Pythagorean theorem. And we would just have to find then the resultant by using Pythagorean's theorem, that would be the C value. So instead of thinking about Pythagorean's theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What you can do here is you can rewrite it as, and I'm going to write it on the upper left-hand corner, you can write it this way, that the resultant vector squared will always equal the summation of all the x components squared, okay, I should put that in parentheses, plus the summation of all the y components squared. That's it, okay? Then just take the square root of both sides. So to find the resultant, all you gotta do is this. Take the square root of the sum of all the x's squared plus the sum of all the y's squared. That's it. Okay, and the vector table sets it out nice and easy. So getting back now to solving um, the resultant magnitude. So let's just use that easy formula. Okay, I'm gonna use it on the bottom right-hand side. So the resultant vector should be equal to the square root of the sum of all of the um, <clears throat> x's squared, right? So the sum of all the x's was negative 19. Now you gotta square that value. Good, then you're gonna add it, then you're gonna add to that the sum of all the y's, which was negative two, and square that. Then just throw it in the calculator. So let's take it out, so uh, square root, of negative 19 squared, just make sure you use parentheses, 19 squared plus two squared. So we get a nice value of 19.1. 19.1, .1. 
And really we should have two sig figs. I'm just going to go to three because it would essentially mean that the both lanes are the same and that doesn't make much sense. But it's going to be slightly bigger than the, than the um, side of negative 19. So this should be in meters. Okay, so this is the resultant vector. This is the magnitude. All right. Now, once we know the magnitude, we can find the direction. And we can come up with a simple formula here again um, in order to find the degree measure. So notice in my picture that I drew right here on the bottom right-hand side, this angle, right, it'll have a uh, tangent form to it because we know relative to the angle I just drew, we know the opposite side and we know the adjacent side. So if you always frame it like this, you can simply come up with an easy tangent formula to always use. Okay, so the tangent value, actually, let me give myself a little more space. I'm going to put it in the upper left-hand corner. So the tangent value of the resultant angle is always going to equal the sum of all the y values divided by the sum of all the x values. That's it. That's all it is. So let's use that formula simply. So the tangent of <clears throat> the ta oop, the tangent of my resultant angle is going to equal the sum of all the y's, and the y values here were negative two divided by the sum of all the uh, x's, which is just negative nineteen, and the tangent of that. Now will be if we just do the division, this is 2 divided by 19, 0 0.11, we'll round to 2 sig figs, 0 0.11. Now take the inverse tangent of it. So inverse tangent of 0.11, and we get a value of about 6.3. So 6.3. Great. And now that is the angle. Now remember, we have to, that's the magnitude of the angle, but now we have to tell the direction of it. So for this angle in my picture, and this you might have to draw a picture for because it's a little hard to kind of tell without it in my opinion. Um, the angle that I drew in my picture now is uh, south of west. Right? That's how I drew my angle there. Okay, it's south of the western um, coordinate. All right. So a full, full answer here, full, full answer, final answer would be something like this. Um, the resultant vector is equal to 19.1 meters at 6.3 degrees south of, I forgot the H there, south of west. And that would be it. Long problem because there's many, many parts to something like this. But shouldn't take you this long to do it after you practice it enough. All right, so remember, basically stepping back, just take each individual vector and find the components of it. You don't even have to put them together in a nice picture. Just do them separately. Throw them in your vector table. Add them all up. Take those summation values and plug it into your resultant formula that I gave you. That'll give you the magnitude. Then you can also take them and plug them into the tangent formula I gave you. And then from there, you might have to just draw the, core, the um, components of the resultant vector to kind of tell south of west or north of east or whatever the case is. All right. So thank you guys for tuning in. Hope this helped. And uh, please remember to subscribe. Thank you.